Hey dolls, it's your girl Pumps coming to you with another video. I'm back this Sunday for a sit down video. I felt like I hadn't sat down. Hey English son. I hadn't sat down in a very long time to touch base with you guys and also to interact with some new subscribers. I've been looking and I've been liking and I've been replying to a few dolls' comments under my videos and i've been noticing you know a lot of new subscribers and i'm so happy you guys have joined my family but i was just like you know on a regular like you know channel when's well it get to know me sit down so i decided also since this is a new channel technically let me do a sit down video and you guys um ask me questions i posted on my instagram if you don't follow me on instagram it's in the description box underscore pumela on instagram and twitter my two main accounts are instagram and twitter i'm not that active on twitter either unless i'm posting content that i'm like i just uploaded a video otherwise you grand is poleleo like i keep to myself i don't bother people so don't come for me i i don't bother anyone in this video we are drinking um red bull i wanted to drink the apricot the summer edition however you yeah, know like a son I didn't have time to go get new red bull. So obviously see I romanticize our boom to our channel. We're drinking it out of a wine glass. So cheers to that. If you're interested to get to know poems, stay tuned. got quite a few questions from you guys i'm gonna look at the questions on my laptop because obviously no i got but on youtube guys i'm shooting with my phone for those who know those who know know cheers to you guys i hope you have a glass of something let's get a glass of something if you don't have a glass of something let's get into it so the first question guys you guys sent a lot of questions and i'm actually like <laughs> so shook and i don't think i want to get through them because i don't want to post an hour long video um all right so i'm gonna start with the lighter questions and then we're gonna go to the heavier questions because i swear to god there were some questions that made me go oh, oh my days like um and you're right but since that's pendula guys just you know so we can get to know each other and you guys can see you know that actually we are as usas poems in all right yeah so I'm gonna try and answer everything as honestly as I can. Um, as in as in though, I might not even get to them because these screenshots are like 10 million. Um, a lot of questions about school were asked. Uh, someone said, what are you studying right now? Someone else said, what are you currently studying? Which school do you attend? What are you studying? Are you studying right now? If you're studying, what are you studying? How's life after graduating? Okay, I think those are all the school questions. So I am currently a student at SACAP. It's the South African College of Applied Psychology. It's a private institution all over South Africa. So it's like Vega and is this a person University College. It doesn't only focus in psychology. I think initially, I think it was founded in 97. Initially it did, hence the psychology in its name however it's now branched there's also human resources there's a lot of like other business courses that you can do there but yeah so i study in um cape town um okay, i'm doing my honors in psychology there so life after graduating is pretty tough especially in my field so psychology is very saturated it's in demand um for post-grad studies because in order to become any type of psychologist you need to have your honors and your masters so it is very competitive after graduating your undergrad to get into honors i didn't get in last year because i graduated in i finished my degree in 2021 at the end in december so i had applied for 2022 and i didn't get in anywhere and then i applied for 2023 which is this year and i got in so i went to say uh, someone asked if it's my passion are you planning on doing another qualification after this one yes so 
I am doing my honors and I did say that I have to do my masters um, in order to become a psychologist. I haven't decided what I want to do between counseling psychology and clinical psychology. I've been going back and forth um, with, but I do think that at some point in my life, I'm going to decide and that's going to be when I kind of dabble in both. So I do want to do my masters. However, I did not apply for next year because, you know, I've been getting a lot of um, advice from mentors, uh, lecturers, professors, and clinical psychologists. And I'd like, I've been seeking a lot of advice from people in the field also, just people with like experience on life. Because um, I feel like it's a, there's a lot of pressure in your 20s. So you're trying to figure yourself out. You're trying to make sure you're making the right decisions. So, you know, you do, well, I did go to a lot of people kind of seeking like, advice am i going about this the right way should i wait for this should i go for that when should i do that so a lot of advice that i got was that you do need some life experience personally for me i have not worked a day in my life and that is um mainly because of my parents my parents really believe that and working on the side causes a lot of distractions if you are working you're not going to put all your might into your studies because you have other things going on that are important as well. I don't know if it was the, I, I wouldn't say it was the wrong advice. However, it kind of didn't work in my favor, favor especially in my um, field, which is psychology, where in order for you to do your masters, you need to have done some sort of volunteer work, some sort of work experience. I belong to this organization, I've worked there, I've worked there, and then I did a couple of months doing that in that organization, you know what I mean? To be an all-rounded candidate for your masters, um, it helps to work during your undergrad or your honors. So I am going to take a gap year again next year. Um, last year I took one involuntarily because I didn't get into honors. This year I'm taking one voluntarily because I actually need to work. So I'm going to be working for the year, kind of like cementing myself in the space, making connections, networking, you know, kind of affiliating myself with different organizations to build my resume when I do apply for my master's. So, so yeah, is it a passion? I, my passion was medicine in high school, just because it's not like I had done medicine, <laughs> but I really wanted to be a doctor in high school. Um, but guess I know, med slapped me in the face and made me realize that actually your dreams are not going to come true, baby. No matter what, I was really good in biology. I was an A student in biology and I was an average student in physics. But I really feel like if I worked really hard, I would have gotten my, uh, like my physics marks would have gotten up. But like my maths was just, it was actually pathetic in maths marks. I'm like, there was no hope and it crushed my dreams completely. I never dropped maths. So I just kind of accepted my fate that like, because I dropped physics anyway, I wasn't going to get into medicine. So psychology for me was the next best thing i just realized that it is the closest thing that i'm going to get to becoming a medical doctor i will be a doctor of the mind i want to pursue my phd at some point in my life i don't think i'm going to do it as consecutively as i'm doing right now where i'm going to do my masters and then do the phd right after i think i'm going to work and then do my phd part-time i do want to be end up becoming dr lukwaba I think my dad will be so proud and also just like for me to fulfill my childhood dreams of being a doctor i really i think it was that one of those things that i stumbled across as a second option but fell absolutely in love with i am absolutely in love with what i do like what i study is something that came to me i think that's the beauty of it all the next question was lifestyle <laughs> someone asked me how do i find my lifestyle someone else asked me do you receive an allowance or do you work? Does your mom send you allowance? Okay. So I think a lot of people would find this question kind of personal. But honestly, yes, I get an allowance from my mom. I have never worked a day in my life, like I said. And I don't work on the side at all. My lifestyle is funded by Umzali Wam. So, like, you see anything, it's not me, it's my mom. She provides everything for me. My boyfriend sometimes, I am spoiler, but my mom funds me. I am her baby. Someone asked me, how do you stay consistent in gym? 
I'm laughing because I haven't been consistent for the last two weeks and I'm so hacked. I'm so hacked. Uh, what's your goal in the gym? Yo, um, my goal definitely is to lose 20 kilograms. I'm not going to mention my weight right now because I'm like, oh, but I want to lose 20 to 25. You know, in the beginning of my weight loss journey, I had lost about nine. So I was almost at the halfway mark and then I gained back about like four. So I've told, in total, I've lost like five because D and that back and forth. Um, so I still have like about 15 to 20 um, more kilograms to lose. I know a lot of people say working out uh, helps them. I'm yet to find out what exactly helps. For me, working out is for my body. I want to look good at the end of the day so I can feel good. But the actual working out, I don't find anything therapeutic about it. I'm not going to lie to you. I do it because I want to look good. And I want to feel myself. I want to be confident again. So that's why I'm doing it. Otherwise, and that's what keeps me going. What keeps me going is my end goal. What keeps me going is me actually wanting kids. And I feel like... I want kids and this body that I have right now is the body I want after kids. So if I'm like this before imagine because my doctor did mention to me that I am very sensitive to hormones and um that's why she suggested that I don't go on a contraceptive that is hormone um based. So I'm looking at copper IUD. <laughs> Like, you need a guy's hormones. So it was literally just a cop IUD, but I'm not getting it because the horror stories are her child. I am not even going there. All right. Would you relocate to another province? Why? Why not? Another province? No, not right now. Um, right now, I see myself in Cape Town. I was, I started my varsity journey in Cape Town. So I did my first, second, third year at UWC. And then it was COVID around my second year. So I went to PE because it was like distance learning and I had just started dating my boyfriend. So that gone back. In fact, that time that like land there, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was a gone girl. I went to PE. I lived there for about two years. I finished my degree, and now I'm back in Cape Town to do my honors degree. So, I love Cape Town, and I don't think I spent enough time here. So I genuinely want to submit myself in these streets for now. I think I see myself in Joburg um, for a little while when I'm working just for life experience but right now i think i belong in cape town and i would relocate um when i'm working definitely um but not not right now i think umdu maga move and go go put view a guy and land and i i want to call it a love in the money say you know now go good and man and i will follow you my men my can follow which again i'm because i'm not the cup can him can him pass a lot bandage Okay, now we're going into the relationship questions because you guys love the juice. Someone said, how do you make long distance work? Someone else said, um, how has the transition to being in a long distance relationship been? Someone else asked, how do you manage to keep the spark in your relationship? Okay, um, let's talk about the long distance first. So someone actually asked me, why are you in a long distance relationship? <laughs> so the short answer to that is just because Opal Viewer guys has a job in another city and I am studying in another city. Um, I'm pursuing my dreams and he's pursuing his. That's why we're in a long distance relationship and it's at Anna, so we're making it work. Um, so the transition, long distance, how are you dealing with long distance? I would say uh, someone asked, do, do you guys travel to see each other or or if I question mark? what else are we gonna do <laughs> so obviously like we travel to see each other because there's no other way we don't have a choice i don't know like when we have money we'll try and travel every month to see each other um at the end of the month because so i mean we get money at the end of the month so we make a plan to see each other otherwise the transition has been very tough <laughs> first of all we used to live together and then now we're living in completely different cities so obviously like i think it helps that we're both really busy. Um, honest is really demanding. I'm literally always doing schoolwork <laughs> and he is in a very demanding job as well. So we are busy most times during the day. We probably only call each other at night when we're about to sleep and just like chat, catch up. So it's been tough, but we've been adjusting. I think 
pretty well like better than we thought also um yeah that's all i can say about that like i cause bias and that's far guy otherwise i realized i didn't answer the question on how do i keep how do i manage to keep the spark in my relationship uh would v where and usis pums have been dating for three and a half years now our spark hasn't really faded at all i don't think three and a half years is a very long time for like our sparks is out there you know but okay guys reality does kick in after like the first i think also because 2022 i was just going through a lot individually like myself my relationship also took a dip we were fighting a lot there was a lot that like hey the, the devil was trying the devil was trying but uh, my husband it's been written in the stars i love him so much i think there is a lot of love in our relationship above everything else no matter how much we go through the motions because we will everyone does no matter how much you don't like the person in the moment to <sighs> like surpasses everything we, I, I think even in our fights there is a lot of respect. We do not scream at each other. There's never like Dizaktelela or Kanyin Dizakezela. Because in Damtana Lomdu, it's just that right now he's making me very annoyed. He's making me extremely angry. And we have those moments. But I think putting love at the top of everything. That's also how we maintain our spark. How we still are like we've we just met like a week ago and I smile when I talk about him or when someone mentions him, I smile and I blush. It's because and and that comes from and it's it's evident in how he treats me and how he speaks to me um before he even says it and it's like a cycle so he treats me like that because he loves me because he sees how i treat him and i treat him like that because i see how much he loves me and how he treats me so it's like we're always just like reciprocating the energy that we give each other um, I think the biggest advice that I would give to anyone, if maybe you're losing a spark circle, is just go back to the moments where you first met. Why did you fall in love with this person? Because for me, even in Batoyake, like, Uviwe is so gentle with me. And he's a, he's a manly man. He's an alpha male. I love me some alpha male, child. But he's so gentle with his woman. Like, and the time that, um, pata njenge kanda, um, is written in the stars i just i love him so much <laughs> um yeah i think go back to when you guys first met and what drew you to him um and hold on to that and revisit that if there's been some complacency because we're human guys we're going to be complacent talk about the things that you find that your partner has become complacent in partners get lazy guys you get you get accustomed to the fact that our poems deny it no 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 oh poems i want to punch up but color guy oh poems we are full on left right and center you got to make sure you're always on your a game because the oh poems the who's a bond but actually on value we she yeah well i've gone but in fact no man but the poems before I call you con ba man can you entertain and partly because morning at my evaluation to the number to work because I'm tanned which will be a call again don't go at you at the bar bar in tanned bona calisa yeah but oh we were also like in the beginning of race she wasn't the most romantic person but I'm glad about put him now yeah when I'm not in my head I live in romance world Kassana you will buy if flowers but in the exam and the exam now you're going to question those are romance come on like now you're telling flowers no because I'll tell you flowers in fact, for law, umtu We need to train umtu abantu bethu. Sibaqale ba baby yenza nje. Akha wenze nje umtu wami zanga ndamfumana ka izinje yami. Nicingiba joma nimfuna nina. Why is I have my faults, guys. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but umtu am nae. Umalisi ta, baby man. Maybe cause I make angry. Namtu mama because umtu am galogusa.
Um, someone asked, hey girl, curious to know why you changed your surname from Nondabula to Lukwaba. So this girl knows, she knows, knows me. <laughs> she be following me. Um, so uh, the answer to that is that Nondabula is my mom's surname. My mom's maiden name. Lukwaba is my dad's surname. So my parents dated for about 23 odd years um, before they got married. So... <laughs> Um, there's a guys are so going into detail. I mean, they both were married before some of the things just didn't go through and they were only able to get married um, legally in 2016. So they got married in 2016 and I changed my surname after that. So um, technically by culture, because my parents were not married when they had me. However, I lived with both my mom and my dad in a happy household. Um, I grew up with my mom and my dad. That's why for the longest time, I didn't of which So it was that type of situation. But my parents got married. My mom changed her surname to Lukwaba. And then I changed my surname to Lukwaba as well. And we were one big happy family. And that's the tea, girl. Someone asked, how do you deal with pressure? How do I deal with pressure? Um, Sana, I cry. <laughs> I cry. I cry when I'm under pressure, guys. But honestly, pressure builds you. <laughs> like, if I don't feel pressure, I'm not really going to take anything seriously and not work at the best of my abilities. So I'm one of those people that work well under pressure. However, like, pressure in terms of life in general, it's tough, guys. It becomes really tough. There's a lot of pressure around me, specifically um, being... In Sikaya Sakaya, I am the last born, but I'm the first born all at once. I'm the only child from both of my parents. So since my dad passed, my mom, I'm her pillar. Like, I'm literally what holds her up. So it's a lot of pressure on me because I'm used to being the baby, like everyone babies me. But also like now that like my 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 dad has passed away and also my brother passed away, I haven't mentioned this to people. Yeah, those are the things that I've been saying have been going on in my life and I, and I don't talk about my brother's passing and I haven't, a lot of people in my life don't even know about it, but I have, you know, experienced a lot of pain um, the last couple of years of my life and it has put a lot of pressure on me, a lot. See, I don't, have, I haven't been dealing, I have not been dealing and I'm trying to right now. What do you love most about yourself? Um, okay. <laughs> I think what I love most about myself is my energy. Um, it's my ability to make people feel comfortable. And I love that I, I get into a room and people laugh. People are smiling. I think that's the, the biggest quality I love about myself is how comfortable I make people feel and how uh, joyful I make them feel. I think I bring a lot of joy into a room. I know I know but I I feel like I do and I that's one of the things I love most about myself. I I also um got a lot of questions on story times. So someone said, "Will we have story times? Are we going to get story times? You still love them, get doll." <laughs> um is story times enye into ne? Dibali is gag. Dibali sa is gag. And go cuz I Right now, this is part of my life. A lot of my family members also watch my YouTube now. So I'm just like, I'd rather they don't know about this gachazam. Come on. Like, I'd rather they don't know. But also, I think I'm just balisa zonga, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Shame. And Nazo is gacha. Like, ending as balisa. I'm just balisa zonga, shame. I apologize to the new subscribers who don't know Pooms from 2020. Because I had some fire story times where I'm just like, when I watched them back, also, I used to laugh because your guys took always to see Kasana. Who goes to see? I don't think so. However, when I do think of like some stories, I think because I've also like I've told them all. If I do think of a story, I will. Um, right now, <laughs> I don't have any more skatas, unfortunately, that are appropriate. Definitely, it's not like a complete no. I'm not giving it a hard no. Um, I'll see as time goes. Okay, I'm over, guys. Mm -mm. Someone says, "How did you and Upud viewer meet?" <laughs> I think, because there were a couple of people that asked this question, I think, um, I think we should do a video, a separate video on that. Comment down below if you want to see Ubud Vive feature. 
I don't know if I want to like make a whole video right now. Maybe we can invite him over and we can like briefly go over like how we met and then talk about other things. You guys comment video suggestions, we'll put viewer down below. And I will run it past him. I don't know if the guy is going to agree. I don't know if I put viewer guys. Can we make any chance? Um. All right. How do you balance gym academics and your social life? It is tough. I barely balance. Let me tell you that. I barely balance. Like, it is a challenge. <laughs> it's a challenge, guys. Sometimes I lack in gym. Like, one has to die sometimes. Not all the time. I think I need to work on my time management as well. As well because I think it is possible. I just am really struggling with time management. And you know, the moment I'm going to guys. Any chance I get, you know, you can do it so i'm gonna answer the most asked question always wanted to ask this i just hope you won't get emotional it's been two years since the passing of my dad i'd like to know how you heal because i've been trying um other things and i'm just not recovering i'd like to heal but it's just so painful any advice please um i also got a couple of questions sort of alluding to the same thing uh sana i hope i'm not asking too much how are you and how are you dealing with grief i'm so happy that you're finally back on youtube do you mind sharing why you took a break to begin with how was losing your father affected your life generally it's been a minute you've been through a lot are you in a bit of space now how do you deal with the loss of your dad okay um so this question i've been reading a lot so a lot of people have been asking me about my dad and about loss how am i dealing with grief why did i stop youtube um i stopped youtube because my dad passed so obviously then since then i just didn't post that week i never posted the following week I was probably a zombie for about a month and a half, just not going anywhere in my bed, crying every single day. My eyes were completely swollen, was not speaking to anyone. Like I, I was, a lot of people were asking me how I dealt with it. To be honest, I never dealt with it. I redirected my pain. I suppressed my pain. I didn't think about my pain. I didn't. I didn't allow myself, even though I thought I did, because I stayed for a month and a half, constantly wanting to be alone, constantly depressed and sad. And I use the word depressed in quotation marks because I was never diagnosed. Um, and I don't want to self-diagnose either. I did, however, show a lot of symptoms of depression during that time. My mom was very, very worried about me. I had to sit her down and say to her, listen, I'm not suicidal if that's what you think, because no one would leave me alone. Like. I just wanted to be alone in my room. And the thing is, is that everyone would hear me crying from outside of my room. And obviously, like, and I'm one of those people where I, I want to cry alone. I need to cry alone because that's my time to let it out. Whatever I'm going through, I need to cry. I'm a crier. I cried and stayed, like crippled in bed for a while and after that i kind of just went switch i need to get like i need this is my final year number one i needed to study i needed to study hard because i needed to graduate number two i needed to get my ass up and be there for my mom you know when one parent passes away in a household things change there are so many things you have to meet up with lawyers with estate you know what I, there's so much that's happening and my mom is also grieving and this is why i was saying earlier on that i have to be her pillar i had to be her pillar at that point in time she had no one her she had just lost her husband she's going through grief herself but she has a household to look after and guys that is not an easy task you know Especially when your husband was was giving you princess treatment, anything you want, sweetheart, I'll do for you. You know, she now has to 
you know, get the ball rolling and, and keep a roof over our heads and get the paperwork done. She has to go to that meeting. She has to do that. And I had to be there for her. And I think also this was supposed to be a time in my life where I was celebrated as well. It was 2021. I was celebrating my 21st birthday. I had been planning my 21st since I was 13. Um, literally put my grief aside and I suppressed it for so long. The whole of 2021, I lived my best life. However, no one could see behind the scenes. I was crying every other day, probably four times a week and weeping. It was horrible, but amazing at the same time. And I, I know during that year, I got a lot of DM because I was traveling. All my friends were turning, turning 21. I was in Joburg, this, I was in PE, I was in Cape Town, I was in Neisner. Um, the content I could have made would have been great. And I got a lot of DMs from my dogs because I said, hi, bo, go tell them vlog. When are you coming back to YouTube? And no one really understands that at that time of my life, I was suppressing a lot of pain and I was not dealing with any of my grief. It caught up with me in 2022. 2022 was a very tough year for me. I mentioned it earlier for my relationship, but like personally, it was not okay. I had just gotten rejected for honors at every institution I applied at. Secondly, I, I kept dreaming about my dad. Like every other night I was dreaming about my dad. I was so sad that he was gone. And I was like, I don't know why I didn't feel this last year. Inga, tutadam, usando soleka. Glow December, I'm sure I go 2021. But it's like a glow walk at 2020. I'm feeling all the emotions. Like I'm feeling so sad. My heart. I literally had chest pains from the heartache of losing my dad. The whole of 2022, I was an emotional wreck. I was not okay. It was one of the darkest times of my life. I can't even put into words how not okay I was. There's a question I'm looking at here that says who from your friends is your most closest. I think I am close with all of my friends. My friends who are my friends know that I'm close with them. But and I'm putting this question into this question about how I handled losing my dad. Because I remember throughout the toughest times of my life, because these were the toughest times of my life. I had never been in a darker space than when I lost my dad and when I lost my brother recently. I lost my brother this year. And I don't talk about it because I haven't come to terms with, with losing him. It was sudden and it was heart-wrenching. I felt like God had forsaken me in a way that I don't think anyone could understand. You know, through losing those two people in my life, I was going through so many emotions, like thinking about whether life was worth living, the pressure on my shoulders. I had so much to do. I'm currently doing my honors. My mom is paying cash, whereas before I was on a bursary. It's an, a private institution, and so it's really expensive. I have to make sure that I pass all my modules I'm doing while at school, so I get a better chance at going into masters. But there's life doesn't stop for you i'm still going through life things becoming an adult there's so many things that you have to be responsible for i remember there was a time where sino said to me i understand your mom your mom lost her husband but you lost your dad what about you and i was just so grateful to be seen <laughs> even now my mom lost a son and I lost my brother. We shared the same womb. That was my only sibling I had growing up. The siblings I have on my dad's side are on my dad's side that I met when I was in high school. That was my ride or die. Like he, I only had a brother in my life that I, I grew up with. I had a very tough time with those two losses in my life. And one person, Usino was someone who always knew what to say. Usino, her, her words of comfort are so comforting. I always feel like, how do you know exactly what to say to me when I'm going through something? She knows, she knows exactly what to say to make me like feel comforted. I don't feel better. I feel comforted. I don't expect to feel better. I don't think anything that she could say would make me feel better about anything that I'm going through. But Usino has been there for me in my darkest times. Like, I'm so grateful.
for that friendship. I'm sitting here in awe of how she has held me down like through the darkest times of my life. And she always knows like always knows when I need her. Like I always say to her, like your timing is so crazy because she always knows when I need her. She always knows when I'm going through something. Like she'll always text me like, hey, I'm checking up on you. And I'm just like, it's like you knew that I just got the news, you know, that my brother had passed. And it's like those two people, like I love my friends, but Tato and Sino have just have pulled me from the bottom when I have felt like I was drowning and they've held me up like in so many ways that I don't even think they understand how grateful I am for their friendship and because they don't know that they've saved me in times where I didn't think that I would make it through they saved me my boyfriend as well like he has every day of my life like we were um forever grateful to him for just being there he's been there for everything when i got the phone call that my dad passed he was there and i fell to the ground and he helped me i literally remember my week my 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 knees just going weak and i just i, I didn't even understand what was happening i heard the news and my my knees just buckled and i fell to the ground and i just started crying and he picked me up and he held me and he cried with me and I'm grateful for the people in my life because they don't know that I have thought about so many things. So many things where I feel like life isn't worth it anymore. And those people that I just mentioned now don't even know that they literally saved me. I'm trying now, going forward, to heal. I am making it like an active effort. I'm here today and right now I'm seeking therapy. Um, actively trying to make an effort to get through everything um whew, that got really deep but yeah so i am still dealing to answer the question i haven't dealt with my dad's death um i'm making an effort um i'm talking to the people in my life i'm opening up more so that i don't go through things alone and I am seeking therapy. So yeah, um, I hope I answered that. Um, I'm still, I'm still dealing. Bye. But I realized that if I don't get back to YouTube now, because I'm still dealing with grief, because I stopped and I decided not to come back because I felt like I wasn't over what happened to my dad and essentially what happened to me and my family. But I realized that I don't think I'll ever be over it. I don't think I'll ever get through it. Where I'm like, oh, that's the pain. I left it there. I, it pains me to this day. And I think also YouTube encourages me to be productive. There are times where I literally am so sad. I just want to stay in bed. I just want to cry. I don't want to think about life. I don't want to think about the things that I have to do. But I have to get out of bed. I have to shower and get working. I have to shoot content. I have to pass. I have to go study and so if i know that i have to get up to shoot content i will eventually i've gotten out of bed i'll eventually do other things i'll start that assignment instead of starting it two days before you know so it does promote productivity and that's why i'm here i'm like i'm not ready but if not now when so i'm not okay guys i'll be very honest and frank with you i'm still trying to navigate through everything that i'm going through but i have people in my life that love me a lot and if not for me then for them because they're rooting for me they believe in me more than i believe in myself sometimes and i want to thank the people in my life for loving me so much and being there for me all the days of my life child so that is it from me guys i am signing out now i really hope you enjoyed that video of getting to know me a little bit more we literally just spoke about like some random ass stuff. You guys didn't even ask me what my favorite color is. It's purple, by the way. 
um <laughs> we're gonna have a lot more sit down videos and you guys will get to know me as we go along vlogging and stuff i love vlogging this was the only the beginning of our chit chat sit down videos i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a huge thumbs up subscribe to the channel don't forget to turn on your notifications bell so that you know every time i post a video i love you dolls so much i'll see you next time bye